Welcome to my channel, Elijah and Moses, which is named after them. And I wanted to bring you an updated, detailed information about the archaeological dig of the true Bethsaida, which was the home of Simon Peter and Andrew, his brother, and Philip, the disciples of King Jesus, the Messiah of Israel. And they have been continuing with the excavation, and I have already detailed two videos prior to this earlier about this location and this dig, and now there's updated information that you may find exciting. So I wanted to read this to you, and it says, archeologists may have found traditional home of Jesus' apostles by the Sea of Galilee. Um, it says, below an early church in the village that they think was Bethsaida, archeologists uncovered a sacred wall, not from Simon Peter, the apostle's house. However, the one next to it could have been. By the Sea of Galilee, smack beneath the apse of a Byzantine period basilica, in what may be the lost village of Bethsaida, archaeologists have found remnants of a wall that predates the church. The builders of the ancient church may have believed that the wall, which they seem to have venerated and carefully ensconced below the apse of their edifice, belonged to the home of Jesus' apostles, Simon Peter and Andrew. It can't have, though. That wall is from the second or third century. Over the uh, researchers directing the excavation at El Araj, Professor Mordecai Aviam of the Kinneret Ac Academic College and Professor R. Stephen Notley of Kinneret Academic College and Yeshiva University. But perpendicular to it, in the lower archaeological layer, also beneath the apse floor, was another wall. And this remnant actually is from the first century, the time of Jesus and his apostles. Whether it was actually part of Peter's house, we cannot know, but it's from the right time. The two walls, the one from the second or third century and the one from the first, were revealed when the mosaic floor of the apse was expertly removed by the excavation conservator. Yahashua, Jesus Dre, ultimately the floor, is expected to be restored. There are multiple lines of evidence supporting interpretation of El Araj as Bethsaida and the church as Simon Peter's church, a.k.a. the Church of the Apostles. First of all, the, Byzantine, um, the Byzantines didn't build their basilicas anywhere, and they were always built with the apse positioned over a sacred relic, Aviam explains. Also, Byzantine faith had a fascination with the apostles. The last Christian voice of the late Roman period, 20 years before the beginning of the Byzantine period, was Eusebius, writing the Onomasticon in the year 304, Notley points out, and Eusebius cited Bethsaida for one thing, being the home of the apostles not for the healing of the blind man from Mark's gospel or the feeding of the multitudes, which Luke's gospel describes on the outskirts of Bethsaida, but for being the city of the apostles, Notley says. In my mind, his entry in the Onomasticon is a vestige of the continuity of Christian memory about the close association of Bethsaida in the home of the apostles Simon Peter, Andrew, and Philip described in John 144. What Eusebius wrote, Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter and Philip, it is located in the Galilee on the lake of Gennesaret, which the lake is also called Kinneret, also known as the Sea of Galilee. But furthermore, this wall's location and the loving care with which the church builders boxed it in and preserved it suggested it was a sacred relic that the Byzantines venerated this wall. Revering the wall of a long gone sacred edifice isn't uncommon. 
The Western Wall in Jerusalem is venerated as a remnant of the Second Temple period, or at least a wall surrounding its courtyard. Now archaeologists have found evidence that the Byzantines venerated a wall in a fishing village on the Sea of Galilee in what is today northern Israel. Bethsaida abruptly disappeared from the Jewish and Christian historic records in the late third century, possibly because it flooded during a period when the lake level rose. And at some point, the memory of this Roman era Jewish village's location was lost, let alone the memory of the sites within it. Well, I think that the Lord covered it up and it's now being revealed before the Lord suddenly appears and it's uh, a little bit of a testimony might you say to the world before his sudden appearing Jesus is coming back but it says that but maybe those memories were only lost later perhaps after earthquake devastated the galilee in the eighth century maybe when the byzantines were searching the area for the sacred sites the memory of the village and simon peter and andrew's home was still alive and it says when in rome of all the apostles simon peter holds the predominant position he was their leader notley explains the apse of saint peter's basilica in rome lies over what christian tradition holds to be the tomb of this same saint peter the very Simon Peter, whose home may have now been unearthed, or what the Byzantines thought was his home, together with the drainage systems from that home. That is incredible. And by the way, Simon Peter was not buried in Rome. He's not buried under the Vatican. They actually found a cemetery where they found Mary, Martha, Lazarus, which can also be Eleazar, and they found um, Simon Peter, or Simon Bar-Yona, which is Simon Bar-Jona. They found his ossuary, and it has his name on it, and a cross on it. So, it was a very unusual shape, I might add. It was kind of shaped like this, kind of flat on the bottom and went up. And then the inscription was on the side. So that is an untruth that I want people to know the truth. And they found him on the Mount of Olives, buried there. So where are those ossuaries? The story was covered up and they are in Jerusalem in a Franciscan church. And the venerated wall is beneath the center of the apse in keeping with Byzantine tradition for sacred relics. And there isn't anything else there, Avian points out, except the other first century wall. But the Byzantines probably never saw that one. By the time they arrived seeking the house of Simon Peter hundreds of years after the event, that first century wall had probably disappeared under the dirt of ages. Or it was deliberately covered up by either the Muslim invaders or uh, I would say that's more than likely the cause. Also, we know that, you know, um, Hadrian came in and tried to change everything and covered a lot of things over with dirt. But the builders didn't know about it, and they weren't scientifically rigorous archaeologists, the team points out. In another clue that the walls served as the basilica's sacred relic, the church wasn't oriented precisely east-west as most Byzantine churches were. Instead, its slightly askew orientation aligns with the lovingly preserved venerated wall, Notley explains. This is so cool. Centuries later, by which time the memory of Bethsaida's location had faded, and presumably blissfully ignorant of what they were doing, the Crusaders would build a sugar factory at the same site. 
They even repurposed some of the ancient church walls. The archaeologists are excavating the ruins of that sugar factory, too. The crusaders would presumably have been mortified to realize that their sugar production facility not only sliced through parts of a forgotten ancient basilica just feet from its baptistry, but possibly squatted atop what early Christian tradition held to be Simon Peter and Andrew's home. Mind you, it might all have been operated by Muslims. Well, there you go. Points out archaeologist Akia Cone Taver. We don't know that Christians living here operated the sugar factory. It was probably owned by a crusader, a Frank, but that doesn't mean they ran it. Well, my true thinking is that the Muslims put a sugar factory over it and ran a sugar factory because I don't think Christians would have, you know, hidden it. It's the Muslims that are trying to hide Christ in this, and they did that to the Hagia Sophia Church in Constantinople, which had all the relics of the disciples and of Jesus, and they turned it into a big mosque, which it still is today. Um, they covered over all the paintings of the disciples and Jesus that were in the church painted over it with the name of their crescent moon god, which is an abomination to God. Okay, so it says, why would the Crusaders have built one of their dozens of sugar factories there of all places? Not because of local traditions, but because hot weather and lots of water are basic for growing sugar cane, Cone Taver suggests. They quote Mark 8.22. They came to Bethsaida, and some people brought a blind man and begged Jesus to touch him, and his sight was restored. El Araj, on the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee, is one of two archaeological sites competing for the title of the real Bethsaida, recorded in the New Testament as the hometown of Simon Peter, Andrew, and Philip, purported author of the Gnostic Gospel. Excavation began in 2016, almost a century after the Rev. Rudolf de Haas noticed ancient mosaic tiles next to a ruined Ottoman manse. So that tells you the Muslims interfered with it, tried to cover over the truth, which is an abomination. Discoveries at El Araj in previous years include the church remains of a village from the 1st century BCE to the 3rd century CE and lots of fishing gear, which is what one would expect if one found a Jewish fishing village from the Roman period. Excavation of the church revealed, among other things, three inscriptions one containing an entreaty to none other than Simon Peter. The preponderance of evidence led Notley and Aviam to the conclusion that this was none other than Simon Peter's church, the church of the apostles in the village of Bethsaida. The very name El Araj may support the contention that this site and no other was Bethsaida. Notley theorizes El Araj means the lame man, and he postulates that scribes confuse the name Bethsaida, fishing village, with Bethesda, where Jesus healed a lame man in Jerusalem. In the very first Greek Christian manuscripts on Jesus' miracles, confused scribes began to refer to Bethsaida, in Jerusalem as Bethsaida, and somehow Bethsaida gained the association with the lame man. I think they meant to say Bethesda instead of Bethsaida. Well, we add that excavation at El Araj continued despite the outbreak of war on October 7th and the departure of foreign volunteers who left after the fighting erupted. They may want to kick themselves giving the subsequent discoveries, including that the church had served for longer than thought as the remaining team dug down, the archaeologist unearthed two stages of the apse. Evidently, the church operated for hundreds of years from the late 5th to the 8th century. 
Its protracted operation underscores its importance in the early Christian world. It was important enough that they invested in multiple stages of development and preservation, Notley says, further supporting the case that El Araj was indeed Bethsaida, home of the apostles, and this may not have been the earliest church in the town. Right next to the basilica is a eucalyptus tree, a big one. No, the eucalyptus is not indigenous to Israel. They were imported from Australia with the idea of draining the swamp starting in the 1880s, and the less said about that, the better. The tree provides shade from the blazing Middle Eastern sun, but more to the point, it's growing atop another ancient structure, which the archaeologists suspect may have been an even older church from the 4th century and earliest days of the Christian Byzantine Empire. Removing any tree in Israel's public domain requires formal government permission, Aviam explains. It's a bureaucratic morass, but if permission to excavate is applied for and granted, and if the structure turns out to be a 4th century church predating the church overlying the venerated wall, then it could attest to the very early Christian witness to Bethsaida. In addition, the mysterious structure under the tree outside the basilica was built on an east-west orientation, Notley adds. In other words, the Byzantines built the earlier church east-west, but when they came to rebuilding the late 5th century church, they chose to align it instead with the sacred wall under the apse, even if it meant not being precisely east-west, he adds. Why would ancient Bethsaida have had two churches? Aviam thinks the two didn't operate commensurately. The later one would have replaced the earlier. Tabka, too, a few kilometers west of El Araj, also features a 5th century church standing above a church from the 4th century, he adds. And that's where the miracle of the five loaves and two fish that's in the mosaic floor is. Um, there's actually, you know, a picture of that miracle. It seems the El Araj church was possibly destroyed by a massive earthquake in the Galilee in the year 749 and was thus forgotten. The time of Jesus, the possible discovery of the apostles' home in early Christian tradition would be one of the most extraordinary finds in Christian archaeology, though proof may remain forever elusive. Well, I don't think so. I mean, I think it's pretty obvious what it is. Many a venerated site lacks robust confirmation of identification, Aviam says. Take the grave of the second century rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the uh, rabbi who lived in Roman Judea and loathed the Romans. Was he really buried at the site recognized as his tomb on Mount Meron in Israel? We don't know. And how do we know where Simon Bar Yochai is buried. The ancient Jewish sources mention Meron as his burial place, but there are dozens of ancient tombs at Meron, and we don't know for sure which one of them is the uh, Rashbi's tomb. They chose one tomb and said, that's it, and once it was stated, it became fact. And this is the power of tradition, Avion points out. And I should add to that, you know, I wrote about King David's tomb in my book, The Almond Tree, Aaron's Rod, the Messiah, King of Israel. And um, so where they say King David's tomb is, is not where King David was buried. So that's not his real tomb. But the quest for the lost sacred sites began at least 250 years after the events on which Christianity would be based, and ultimately, which boils down to faith. Archaeologists, they were not. At least one quest would take Byzantine believers to Bethsaida, hometown of Simon, Peter, Andrew, and Philip, and they would have sought the apostles' house. How was it identified? Perhaps somebody saw an old wall and said, that's it. Sacred and original is not the same, Cone Taver notes. And Aviam adds, this wall is original.
And then we have this irritating sentence. The archaeologists are not saying that they found the house of Simon Peter. They are saying that they found a Byzantine basilica that goes back earlier than thought to the late 5th century that was built over a venerated wall that the builders presumably thought had belonged to the house of Simon Peter. It didn't, but the wall next to it may have. And in any case, what the archaeologists found was evidence of early Christian tradition. From a scientific position, we always have to qualify. There's no inscription saying Simon Peter lived here. His home could have been anywhere in Bethsaida. One cannot assume that hundreds of years after he lived, the Byzantines got it exactly right. There is also the question of when the venerated wall began to be venerated. But the evidence says that the Byzantines uh, were not simply building a church without any memory. There is a persistent memory that underneath the church existed the first century village, home of the apostles Simon Peter, Andrew, and Philip, and it gives some credence to the historical witness of the Gospels, where it says things take place, we have evidence that fits. We didn't dig underneath the church and find nothing. We found first century homes, he sums up. That means the Byzantines had a living memory of where the town and the home of Simon Peter and Andrew was and remembered that in the building of a church. So they found homes underneath it. And why is there always thrown in there this attitude of continued doubt when God gives these incredible truths and revelations? And the other thing, too, is that in one of the articles I read prior to this, they had found this inscription where they said that it mentioned Simon Peter, and it said something about the master, and they assumed that, it, that the master meant that Simon Peter was the master of the church, you know, that he was the head of the church. But that's not what it means. The master is Jesus, the king of kings. And Simon Peter was his follower. So they need to rethink that because Jesus is called the master. So why it didn't mention Jesus? Why they didn't interpret it as Jesus? I mean, some things are just covered up constantly. And the um, ossuary of Simon Peter was completely covered up. And they keep, the Vatican wants to perpetuate this idea that Simon Peter was the first pope. Not at all. And that he was buried under the Vatican, which he wasn't. And as I stated earlier, they found his ossuary with his name on it, with a cross on it, in the cemetery in the Mount of Olives, where they found Mary, Martha, and Lazarus ossuaries. And guess what? Mary and Martha's ossuaries were in the same hole, the same niche. This information has been completely covered up so that the world would not know the truth. And I'm here on this channel to bring you truth. I hope you choose to listen to the things I'm telling you. There's some really bad things happening with some bad people that are trying to set up for world dominance. And they want this information covered up. And in the last two videos of mine, they cut my viewership in half. They also started deleting my subscribers. So either my channel was hacked by the devil to try to hinder me, shut me up, or whatever the case may be. I will not stop speaking of the glory of the Lord and his incredible testimony. And I do believe that the 
first century Sea of Galilee boat that they found that somehow miraculously was preserved in the uh, sediment and excavated and restored, I do believe that was Simon Peter's boat and that the reason why it still exists is because Jesus sat in it to teach the word of God to the people of Israel. So these things are incredible. These archeological discoveries and I just had to bring this updated story to you that they have found this wall. And it dates to the time of Simon Peter, Andrew, and Philip. Jesus himself may have even touched one of those walls because he was invited to their home. And that would have been their home, you know, growing up. And then later they lived somewhere else, but you know, this is truly an extraordinary excavation. And I pray God's protection over it and that they would find more extraordinary discoveries in the earlier church. I pray they'll find inscriptions stating that's what it is. But you know, why would there be this veneration spot and then have an inscription about Simon Peter and the master and Jesus is the master, but they misinterpreted it as being Simon Peter's the master. No, it's Jesus that it's talking about. So you've got Simon Peter and Jesus mentioned together in the original town of Bethsaida. It is truly extraordinary. I hope this gives you the chills and you're excited about it. I get really excited about these things. So... Anyway, I wanted to bring you this today, and I hope you appreciate it and like it. And if you want to support my channel, it's paypal.me forward slash K-K-R-O-C-O-C-O. And my donation address is Kimberly K. Ballard, B-A-L-L-A-R-D, uh, P.O. Box 246, Niwot, N-I-W-O-T, Colorado, is C-O, 80544. Thanks for the support. Thanks for the love. And I hope this blesses you. I'll see you in the next episode. Shalom for now.